recording guys. It is now seven o'clock. Thank you again so much for joining us tonight, everyone. I greatly appreciate it. And I greatly appreciate April and Harley being here with us tonight. They're gonna to talk to us about um, diversity and inclusion, and they're gonna explain what that means and, and the detail and the meat behind that. But first, I want to ask for all of you, thank you so much for, for having your cameras on. And if you could keep them on so we can have that conversation, so if you have any questions, you can ask them and we can see you. If you can keep yourself muted so that anything in your background and your environment isn't disturbing for our speakers or each other. And then, of course, though, if you have a question, please unmute yourself, raise your hand, drop it in the chat. If you don't feel comfortable saying it to everybody, you can drop it in the chat to just me and I will ask it for you so that you can remain anonymous if you're not comfortable saying it in the group. Um, but I think that that's really all that I have to share. I felt like there was something else, but I can't remember it. So <laughs> thank you again, April and Harley for being here tonight. I'm going to mute myself and let you guys run with it. Awesome. Well, um, it's really great to be with everyone tonight. I'm loving the backgrounds. I love Jake, your be happy sign in the background. I'm loving that. Uh, so tonight we're going to be talking about some kind of diversity and inclusion efforts, but we're going to really be honing in on talking about the LGBTQ community. Um, something about April and I is we're both very interactive speakers. We're both professors at UTC. So we really value questions, comments, anything like that throughout. So um, just like what Miss Sandy said, please put your questions in the chat or unmute yourself. Um, we are big proponents of you don't know what you don't know. So there's no shame in not knowing something. Um, we're just here to help facilitate that conversation. Um, so I'm from UTC social work program. Uh, my background is in victim services. And I did a lot of LGBTQ specific work at my time doing victim service work. Um, and I'll lend it over to April. Sure, uh, thank you, Harley. Um, so kind of as, as Harley shared, I too um, worked with um, individuals who um, identified as members of the LGBTQ. And I think um, in reference to our conversation today, right? Um, we worked with a lot of individuals who came from various um, lives, uh, various backgrounds, various uh, racial makes up, makeups, different genders. Um, and so I think, you know, our, our work um, in dealing with folks who are experiencing violence really exposed us to a wide variety of people. And so we're really excited that all of you guys have found the time in your day to want to wanna talk about this. Um, you know, our... Uh, communities, I'm sure your classrooms, uh, the areas that you frequent with your friends and family oftentimes are made up of people um, that look different ways, who speak different languages, who love differently. And so um, it's just really awesome for us to be able to talk with you guys um, about diversity and inclusion and how to, how to be supportive of people who um, identify as members of the LGBTQ community. So thanks guys for coming. And I'm going to start a screen share. All right. So um, while when we're jumping into this, we have some terminology and things to kind of talk about. Um, so I know everyone has heard of the LGBTQ acronym before, and you might have heard of different iterations of it. So there's been LGBTQIA, there's been um, IAPP, there's been a lot of different letters, and we, and we, uh, we call that the LGBTQ alphabet soup. Um, because there were so many letters and so many people who felt differently and, and wanted to feel included in the acronym. Um, so throughout the presentation tonight, you'll hear us use LGBTQ, but you'll also might hear us use the word queer um, because that is considered an umbrella term. Though a lot of people have some feelings about the term too. So we'll use them kind of interchangeably. Um, but our goal is to be as inclusive to the entire community as possible. Um, so that's why we'll try to use both terms. Um, so let's kind of break down a little bit the, the acronym, right? So LGBTQ kind of encompasses both sexual identities and gender identities, which are, which are actually two different things, um, though they seem to get lumped together um, in the acronym. Um, so first for our gender identities, um, everyone's heard of men and women before, right? We all, we all know what that is. Um, but there's also a lot of different terminology for people and, and the way that they feel about their gender. Um, so for instance, I'm sure you've heard of the term transgender before as well, um, but there's actually a lot of different terms underneath transgender where that kind of talks about how people have different relationships with their gender. And I know that it's sometimes hard to 
to understand kind of what that means. Like how does people, how do people have a different relationship to their gender? And if you've never felt that like confusing moment in your life of you don't really understand your gender, it's sometimes a little bit hard to, to conceptualize that other people have trouble with it. Um, but that's absolutely true. People do. People are very different. Um, that's the one thing about us in social work and, and April and I, we, we believe that people come in all shapes, sizes, and belief systems. Um, so you'll see on my slide here, I have a couple different terms for under our trans umbrella. Um, has anyone ever heard of any of these terms? Actually, I'm not going to make you talk because I know that it's late and Zoom and Zoom is a lot. I won't make you talk, I promise. Um, but if you want to drop anything in the chat, feel free to. Um, and there's so no there's wrong a, answers. There's no wrong answers, guys. Yes, so you know. yes. No wrong answers at all. Um, so we have a lot of people who feel like um, they don't fit into what we call a binary. So if you think about it in terms of like boxes, like there is a male box and there's a female box, or there's a woman box and a, and a, a man box. Um, a lot of people don't feel like they fit into a box um, and it's a little bit harder for them. And so those people might use terms like gender queer or bi gender or gender fluid to express um, how they feel about their gender. And really all these kinds of terms mean they exist somewhere in a spectrum. They're just outside of that box existing how they feel like they, they are in the world. Um, there's also people who are a gender. And if you look at the prefix a, I know this is getting very school, I'm sorry. The prefix a though means without. So that may be somebody who feels like they just don't really have a gender. Um, and lastly, on this list, you'll also see the term two-spirit. And two-spirit is a very specific term for our, um, our native community, which um, is where they feel like they have both men and women inside of them at the same time. And But that's very closely held to their spiritual beliefs. So you'll see those terms. Uh, April, did you have anything you wanted yeah, to add? To? Yeah, I wanted to throw in something too, um, because I, I love the example of the box. And I think for a lot of you guys... Um, and girls, right? Um, I'm sure there have been times in your life where maybe there was something you wanted to do or you felt like um, was exciting for you. Maybe it was a sport you wanted to play, right? And um, maybe people around you told you that's not the sport for you. There's another sport, right? But in your heart, you knew you wanted to play whatever this sport was. And so I think for some people who fall um, under some of these categories, you know, they don't necessarily like the sport that others want them to play, right? They want to play the sport that they like. They want to, you know, if they like basketball, they want to shoot basketball. They don't want to necessarily play hockey. And so I think um, when we think about kind of people's identities, um, who we are and how we identify and what we like is really up to us. It's up to us, right? Like, I choose what I wear to work every day, right? And some of you might be at an age where you're able to choose the outfits that you wear or the hairstyle that you have, right? And you know what it feels like when somebody tells you, hey, you can't necessarily do that because I don't like it. Even if that's something that you really want to do because maybe that's how you express yourself. You like to add colors into your hair because maybe you're a, a lively person and you're very happy and pink makes you feel good or blue makes you feel calm. And so you like that, but to somebody else, that may not make sense to them, right? Um, and so I think sometimes when we're thinking about people that don't always fit into a box, whether that's a box related to gender or a box related to who they love or a box related to their race or a box related to their age, right? I think sometimes we, we put thoughts around people that aren't always fair for how that person wants to live their life. Um, and I think part of why Miss Sandy allowed us to come and talk to you guys today is because our world is made up of so many different people that have so many different beliefs and so many different practices and so many different ways of how they express themselves. I talk with my hands, right? I, that's how I express myself. But my colleague, Harley, may choose to talk in a different way. Neither of those are bad. We just express ourselves differently. And that's okay. So I hope that's the thing that you guys also are taking away from this is that, you know, who you are is great. Um, who other people want to be is great. And we can all coexist together and treat each other with respect. Oh, I love that. We can all do it together. Um, any questions so far? I don't think I see anything in the chat yet. Um, so we'll just keep, we'll keep going. But um, please, if you have them, put them in the chat. 
Um, so for our sexual identities, um, or we'll also call them sexualities because sexual identity kind of feels like a weird term to say. Um, we've all also heard of lesbian, gay, and bisexual individuals, but there are also a ton of other different labels. Um, and some of them are very similar. So I don't get lost in the weeds and, and be like, well, I don't know what that specific term looks like. A quick Google search will find you most terms out there. Um, but for the most part, you'll hear people identifying within LGB and then the P, which is pansexual, is very, very similar to bisexual. I think if any of you spend any time on TikTok at all and have get any kind of like LGBTQ TikToks, like there's a ton of discussion about like what is the difference between bisexual and pansexual? And the fact that they're, we're, they're having that conversation, I'm a part of those conversations, means there's not a huge dramatic change or shift between the two. Um, they mean essentially the same thing with some minor differences that are important to the people who, who use those um, labels for themselves, but they're, they're very similar. Um, asexual, again, we're, that A is without, so somebody who doesn't have any sexual attraction at all. Um, asexual people can definitely have relationships. They can have sexual relationships. They can have children. They can have all of that, um, but they don't have that like desire to have that. Um, but they can still have relationships if they want to. Oops, sorry, I'm going to head a little bit. Hey, can, uh, I, can I throw something for. in there too? Mm -hmm. So, and I think I just want to, I also want to make sure that everyone understands that, you know, gender identity and a sexual identity can be two different things and you know when you think about sexual identity I think it's important to think about because and, and Harley brought this up and I just want to hit this point home it's about who you love right who you love and oftentimes who you love has a title and so when you love someone of the opposite sex, and let's say, for example, I am a woman and I love and have a desire to love a man, you know, the world may define that as heterosexual, right? Or um, cisgender, right? Um, and so again, for a person who might identify as a woman who is attracted and has a desire to love other women, she may identify herself as a lesbian. Um, so just wanting to make sure that you guys are also connecting those dots that just because my identity fits this category doesn't mean who I love and who I desire is necessarily going to fall into that they're that they're aligned in the way that um, we think they are right. Um, Harley spoke about binary, right? And that might be a term that's a little bit new for some of you right and kind of think of it as an either or right it has to be a yes or a no there can't be a maybe or there can't be a mm, let's talk more about this like you know sometimes when you take tests in school there's an there's an absolute answer that's right and sometimes um there might be an answer that's not listed that could also be right um so kind of think about that when you think about binary it's kind of an either or there's no in between it's an either or kind of thing hope that's okay uh harley absolutely you know i love talking with you thank you um so the last one on the list is demisexual which might be something that um is kind of a newer term for folks um, so people who identify as demisexual um, don't have any kind of like sexual feelings or desires or any of that until they have a, an emotional connection to another person. Um, and so it also says more because there are tons and tons of different labels. If you look it up, I think like last I saw there was in the 30s or 40s. Um, and those labels really mean something to the people that use them. And it's important for us to respect the words that people choose to use for themselves. We can't we can't tell people how to feel about themselves or or their relationships. But I also wanted to to point out that sexualities also aren't binary. There you don't necessarily fit into a box. People can also feel like mm -hmm. their sexuality is also on a spectrum. Or um, some days they may feel like they are. 90% lesbian and just 10% like men, but sometimes it's different for different people. So um, sexuality also exists kind of um, on a spectrum for some people. And some people may actually change what terms they use for themselves throughout their lives. Um, and that doesn't mean that they were lying before. It just means that maybe they learned something new about themselves throughout their lifetime. Well, I, you know, and I think about it like this, right? When I was younger, I really didn't like to eat my vegetables. 
But as I've gotten older, I've kind of changed my opinion about them, right? Life has looked a little bit different. And I think for people, sometimes that's kind of how things may evolve for them, right? At one point in their life, maybe they didn't like something. But as time went on, maybe they met different folks, maybe they experienced different things or whatever, maybe they changed that opinion, right? Um, I also want to say, and then I know Harley's saying we're talking too much, we need to move to the next slide, but I also want to, I guess I want to say to you guys, looking at all of this and hearing all this feels a bit, it feels like a lot. This is a whole lot of stuff. How am I supposed to figure all these things out and get it right all the time? And I think part of also what we're talking about here, guys, is this is an opportunity to get some education, but it's not an opportunity to feel like you have to know everything or that by simply just being a welcoming person and accepting people for who they are, that that alone isn't um, potentially a, a, an okay reason, right? Um, to just take people as they are. And I think that's the bigger message here is taking people as they are, treating them with kindness, recognizing that everybody doesn't fit in the same box um, and knowing that there, there might be some, some beauty in us all not being the same and not approaching life the same. So. All right, so we're going to move on and, you know, we both could talk forever about this, so I'm going to try to move us forward a little bit faster, um, but I did just kind of want to share with you this slide right here, and it kind of talks about gender and gender expression kind of existing on that spectrum where not everyone fits on the exact ends so of the male, the female, the man, the woman, masculine or feminine. Um, and this goes down to our, not just our gender identity, but also our gender expression. So kind of what April was talking about earlier about like liking the color pink. That is how somebody is expressing themselves. Um, the way you express yourself doesn't have to be the way you feel about yourself. It could just be that's what you wanted to express yourself that day. So I might want to come up, come to work in some yoga pants one day. That doesn't mean I feel any less of a woman or I'm expressing my gender in a certain way. That's just kind of how I I felt that day. So just wanted to point that out that they're not always inherently linked. Like sometimes you just dress how you want to dress as well. Um, but also in case you didn't know, biological sex also exists on a spectrum. Um, believe it or not, there are chromosomal differences. There's hormonal differences in some people where um, we've ever heard of the term intersex before, um, where somebody might have um, genitalia that looks ambiguous. So it could be somebody who might have a penis but also breasts or they might have like an excess of estrogen which is kind of um we talk about estrogen in terms of like periods and menstruation and, and kind of female um hormones yeah. they might have ex excess female hormones in their brain but their body might look more physically male um that absolutely does happen it's more common than we think it is um, but, um, sometimes people don't find out until really later in life, um, because they maybe went to a doctor and found out their hormones were all like, there was something different with their hormones or something. Um, but all of this kind of just exists on the spectrum. Anything you want to add April? Before I move no, on? no, I'm going to be quiet so we can go to the next slide. Oh my gosh. This is how we talk to each other. Y'all, by the way, we're not picking on each other. Um, so we're not gonna have time for a video tonight, but, um, I'm a big believer in listen to the people who are part of the community. So if you want to hear about trans experiences, I generally identify as transgender. Um, so there's plenty, plenty of YouTube videos of TikTokers um, who talk about their trans experience. So if that's something you're really passionate about, YouTube, Google, TikTok, Twitter, all of those are fantastic resources to hear um, right from trans individuals because I don't want to speak over a community that I'm not a part of. Anything, April? No. Okay. Um, so I, we did want to talk a little bit about pronouns tonight. And I'm sure that you've kind of heard, or maybe you haven't, um, but a lot of people have been talking about pronouns more recently in the past few years. And um, so what, what are pronouns first, right? So our pronouns are like when you, I refer to somebody. So I know April's pronouns are she, her. You can see in my little name right here, I have my pronouns, which are she, her here. Um, so that's how we talk about somebody in a, like a conversation with another person. Um, so I would say I did a presentation with April last night. She was fantastic. So I'm talking about April. I'm using the pronouns that are appropriate for her. Um, some people use different pronouns. Um, so he or she are basically the, the common ones that we all have used. 
Um, but some people choose to use kind of more neutral terms. So they don't really want to identify their pronouns that are more feminine or masculine. They want to be, well, I'm using the word they already. So they want to be more neutral. So some people might use they or them pronouns. Um, and I know that it's kind of unlearning the way you speak, right? When your whole life you've been saying, she said this, or he said that, and now you're trying to relearn how to say, okay, but it's they instead of he or she or whatever that pronoun was like. Um, it's just, it's a way that we can respect people and their experiences when we use them correctly. And, and I, oh, go ahead, April. No, well, I was going to say, and sometimes I think when you're unsure, right, like maybe a person, um, you're unsure, maybe again, we all have some, we all have good, good feelings sometimes, right? Um, and so maybe you, you sense, right, that this is a person who may identify in a different way. Um, sometimes it's a matter of also just letting that person, right, define for you what pronouns are, what, or in what ways they, they would like to be identified, right? I think, especially sometimes as, um, you know, the idea of labels, um, and, and how we, we, we place labels on people that we um, interact with. And so I think in regards to a lot of communities, a lot of diverse communities and different communities, and especially this community, um, it's important that we don't label people by what we think they are, but rather allow people to define for us who they are and what they are. Um, I, again, for me as a black woman, it's important to me that I'm seen as a black woman. Um, it's important to me that I'm again, recognized as a woman, maybe my physical appearance to somebody else may make them question something else about me. My expression may not line up uh, with what the world perceives a woman should look like, but I feel like a woman. I wanna be treated like a woman. I wanna be respected as a woman. Um, and so again, I think one way to very much um, cause uh, gender dysphoria, anxiety, all of these lack of trust issues that you see on, on this cal or on the screen here is by not allowing people to define for you who they are. Um, and that goes across the board, not just with LGBTQ folks, right? That's with, um, you know, our um, minority groups. That's with uh, different gender groups. That's with socioeconomic groups. Um, the ways in which we think about people that live in poverty, right? Versus people that don't. Uh, you know, all of these assumptions sometimes that we make about who people are. I think the, the point here is, yeah, get to know people for, for themselves and allow them to put the labels on themselves based on how they want to identify. Yeah, and I think just to kind of back up what April said is at the end of the day, this is all about respecting another person. It's about seeing another person and letting them know that you care about them for who they are. Um, and sometimes the way you can communicate that is by using proper pronouns, even though I know you're going to make mistakes because I make mistakes and I've been working on this for yeah. many probably more years than many of you have been alive this has been a lifelong journey for me um so it's okay to make mistakes just don't make a big deal out of your mistakes you know a quiet fixing of a, a pronoun is much better than oh my gosh I'm so sorry April I shouldn't have called you he that was my bad oh my god I should have called you she I would never do that to someone because that feels like outing someone also by like making it a big deal um but it's okay to make mistakes we're all learning we are all on a journey of learning something new um, in our lives and respecting people um, yeah. for who they are. April, I'm sorry if I interrupted you. No, I mean, I, I just think it, it goes to show too that I think a lot of you, you know, you're in school and you guys know how um, difficult, right? School can be sometimes, um, how mean people can be sometimes. And I think, you know, to be honest with you guys, kids who fall into this category or kids who, again, are part of this community or self-identify as part of this community oftentimes are children who are being bullied um, at your schools. These are kids who oftentimes are also struggling emotionally. Um, these are the kids, guys, that, you know, really, um, you know, may be experiencing some really difficult things at home because maybe folks in their family don't understand the, the continuum that they're on or the fact that they want to be referred to as they and them when the parents feel like, but I, but I had a, a, a son and I want to call him. Well, I, I, I'm still your son, mom, but I prefer they pronouns, right? So I, I, you know, I think guys, you guys, you guys have seen, I'm sure in a lot of ways, um, the difficulty, the, the, the difficulty 
um, of being in middle school and high school and the ways in which kids can be really mean. And so, you know, I think that's the other thing to take away from this discussion is oftentimes people that are different um, are oftentimes those folks that get picked on, they get made fun of, um, they get mistreated. And so they need leaders like you guys to recognize them as whole people, um, to treat them with the respect. And at the end of the day, do I have to always agree, right, with everything? I don't have to agree. But what I but what we can agree on is everyone deserves to be in a safe environment. You know, all of my peers deserve to be able to be at this school and to be able to learn. Um, and so I think, you know, when we can get past some of those other things, um, what really is important here is just everybody feeling safe. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with that. Um, we kind of talked about this. Um, so something I do think is important for us to chat about for just a moment is kind of understanding the impact of kind of what our LGBTQ and queer um, siblings and friends, family, people in general are going through to better understand so we can empathize, right? How can we have empathy if we don't understand what somebody's going through? So we did wanna talk a little bit about this um, really quickly. So just a, a quick recap of like terms and it's probably terms you've heard before, like homophobia, when we say that we're talking about the irrational hate fear, discrimination, or belief in stereotypes about lesbian, gay people. Same applies for biphobia, but that is for bi individuals, transphobia um, for trans individuals, right? Um, but there's also another term um, that we're seeing used more, more frequently called heterosexism. And so heterosexism is kind of the belief that heterosexuality and heterosexual relationships are the only acceptable norm. Um, and so typically people aren't going to come out and say, I'm a heterosexist. I think it's just straight people in the world. It's more kind of subtle things people might say um, or assumptions people make about other individuals. So for instance, I had a coworker at a previous job. She was a woman. She had a, a, ringer, a, a, ringer, a ring on her finger, trying to mix those words together. She had a ring on her finger and people would ask her about her husband, but she had a wife, but people just automatically assume that she had a husband because she was a woman. That is heterosexism. It was just that belief that because she's a woman, she has to have a husband. Um, so it's not always just this outward, like, gay people are wrong or anything like that. Sometimes it's a little bit more subtle in the way we interact with each other. Um, so something that April and I try to, to share with everyone who we do these conversations with is just don't make assumptions about people. Like if you had a question about, a partner or something, you could just ask, like, tell me about your partner instead of tell me about your boyfriend or girlfriend. It's just a way to make people feel like they can come to you um, and share if, say, it was an LGBTQ relationship, they feel like they can say something um, because there's not an assumption that they're inherently not in that relationship. Well, maybe, you... well maybe that's the other takeaway, right, from the conversation, too, is kind of let people be on a, a they're kind of a, a, a blank canvas when you meet mm -hmm. them, right? Um, you know, you can paint the picture of who the person is based on what they tell you about them, right? So we make no assumptions. We, we are very open about the idea that people can fall in any category, that people may have a wide variety of beliefs. And, you know, at the end of the day, they're, they're a blank canvas and I will interact with people. I'll get to know people and I'll determine if, you know, we, we are on a path where maybe this is a friendship we can develop, but ultimately, right. Just taking people kind of as they are and, and allowing them to, to define that for you. Yeah. So I think that's pretty much all in terms, if we didn't cover this earlier, I know April has mentioned this term cisgender. I've mentioned it. Um, if you don't know what cisgender means, it's when somebody's biological sex and their gender matches. So I am a female who feels like a woman. I am cisgender. It's, you can kind of think about it as the opposite of transgender, truly. Mm -hmm. um, so understanding some levels of invisibility. I don't know if we have any Grey's Anatomy fans in the, in the Zoom today. Um, I'm seeing Sandy shake her head. So at least it's me and Sandy here with our Grey's Anatomy. Um, but that was Callie in Arizona from Grey's Anatomy. They got married. Um, but there are levels of invisibility that LGBTQ or queer folks experience in the world. Um, and so let me actually move these little boxes over so I can read them. So ideologically, so people, society believes that heterosexuality is an acceptable norm and that queer people should not exist. We're seeing a lot of shifts happen, right? We're seeing a lot of normalization. 
we're seeing a lot more LGBTQ characters in media or you know, we had somebody run for president this past cycle who is an outwardly gay man who has a husband. Um, so we're seeing some shifts happen, but this is something that historically the LGBTQ community has been dealing with. Then there's institutional levels of invisibility. So few images of queer people in the media or in places of power, just kind of talked about that. Um, but I remember growing up and this will probably date me a little bit, but I used to watch a soap opera and the soap opera had the first same sex kiss ever on daytime television. And that made the news. And that was when I was growing up. You're not going to see like an LGBTQ couple making the news typically anymore because we're seeing a lot more representation in our media, which is so important for, um, for people your age um, growing up and seeing that there are other people, their same ages or people to look up to um, in the media. Um, there's also interpersonal levels of invisibility. So assuming that all people are straight or cisgender kind of goes back to that point I was talking about earlier about heterosexism. Um, and then lastly, internal. Um, so believing that there's something wrong with you because you're part of the community. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of this before, but there's something called internalized homophobia, where you hear homophobia so much in the world and transphobia so much in the world that you start to believe those things and apply them to yourself as well. Uh, so that's definitely something we see a lot of. Um, if you've ever heard of somebody like coming out really late in life, like when they're, you know, they've been married and have kids and then suddenly they come out. Um, a lot of times those individuals were dealing with internal invisibility. Anything you want to add, April? I mean, no, I think, well, yeah, <laughs> I think, the, I, think the, the, I think one of the things just to just to also round this out a little bit is I think representation is really important, mm -hmm. um, which is one of the reasons why I think, you know, Miss Sandy gave us the opportunity to talk to you guys because, you know, having these discussions and talking about these things are very important. When we think about a lot of, again, vulnerable groups or minority groups, um, those with disabilities, representation matters in our media. Uh, mm -hmm. When we think about minority groups, representation matters, right? Um, when we think about, again, um, individuals who, um, fall into different income uh, categories, but they don't have, uh, they're not experiencing substance abuse problems. They're not experiencing, you know, these levels of violence that might be associated with populations that are struggling in here. You know, it, it, it's this idea, right, that, that people having something that looks like them, that's also depicted in a, in a positive light. And I think that's the other important thing to highlight about this. Like representation is important, right? But at the same time, we also have to be mindful of what is being represented um, in what we see. And so one of the things I think that is very personal for me is uh, some of the things that we see as it pertains to um, African-Americans, right? And, and how the media may portray some of those things. And a lot of you guys know, just like with the issues of LGBTQ, um, a lot of things are being said about um, how members of the African-American community, especially Black men, are being portrayed and how that portrayal is leading to um, a lot of unsafe situations. Um, and again, the same happens for our LGBTQ folks. So, you know, representation is important, but we also want to make sure that the representation that we see is also representative of the people and not, again, this concept of people trying to put us in a box. And because maybe there's a power piece here, I own a station or I own a television station, I can, I can, I can, I can kind of make the script what I want it to, right? So thinking about that too, um, representation on, on all aspects. Um, so some not so fun facts, and I, and I should have given a trigger warning at the beginning of the presentation. Um, so I apologize for that. Um, is that it's important to care about this because it's important to care about people, right? It's, it's important to feel seen and heard and loved in life. And we all want other people to feel seen and loved and heard. Um, but it's also really important for us to talk about this because what we know about the community is that they experience a higher level of violence. Um, so that could be, that's, could be physical violence or stalking, domestic violence. We see all of those things happening at a higher rate amongst the community. So it's really important that more and more people are aware that it's happening and are accepting and loving so that when things like this do happen, that the community has someone to go to. Because um, historically, it's been really scary for the LGBTQ community to be able to say, 
hey, something's happening to me. I need help um, for multiple reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, It's also important to know that 30 to 50% of trans people experience intimate partner violence at some point in their lifetime. So again, we're seeing high rates of violence. So um, access to services is a really important thing to consider. Um, And when I say services, I mean like they feel like they can go to the doctor and not be judged. They feel like they can go to school and be able to talk to a teacher in a safe and environment. Call, they can call the police and they be can believed. Call the police. And be yeah. believed. Yeah. And so historically, this community hasn't really had that opportunity, but we're seeing changes happen. And I think part of that happens through conversations like we're having tonight, through people like you all who are here listening and wanting to learn and care about this. I think all of that is changing what the world looks like for this community, but we still have a ton of work to do. And that's why we have to talk about the not so fun stuff too. Mm-hmm. Um, go ahead. Well, well, and I was going to say, and I think for a lot of you guys, I mean, you guys kind of again, think about the circles that you're in and the worlds that you're a part of, right? And what messages have you heard about this community? You Mm -hmm. know, what things have you heard about them? Um, Or what things have you not heard about them? Uh, You know, again, kudos to Miss Sandy, kudos to your parents for allowing you guys to be a part of this discussion. Because let's be honest, there's a lot of folks that would never even engage in this topic purely off the basis that knowledge is going to make you a member of the community, possibly, because that is also a fear, right? That if we educate people on things, that they're going to become a member of this horrible community. And so I think, um, unfortunately, that again is, is a myth, right? Being educated on how to, to, to in, in social work, we say meet people where they are, right? Um, to, to be educated in order to meet people where they are isn't going to make me a gay person, to me, it's going to make me a better service provider and a better human being because I can interact with whatever person, regardless of what they look like, regardless of what language they speak, regardless of who they love, they're a person. And I'm very much prepared to help that person um, if they cross my path. Um, So another thing that we wanted to share tonight is that there's a lot of dimensions within relationships to consider. So outing is a really big one. It's really, really scary experience to be outed. Um, Everyone should have their own out, like own coming out story. They should be able to feel like they can do it on their own terms. But unfortunately, um, for some people, they don't get to and and they're outed by other people. And sometimes that happens because they were in a relationship and they're not in it anymore and and somebody might say well I'm going to tell people that we were in a relationship um or sometimes it could be somebody found something online that somebody said there's all kinds of different ways that people can be outed and sometimes it's out of pure malicious intent to hurt Mm -hmm. somebody else I mean and let's just call it what it is too a lot in a lot of ways it's it's an it's an intentional effort to try and hurt another person and I don't know about you guys but I'm just not for that I am just not for that type of treatment to anybody I don't care if they're gay or they're straight I'm just not okay with it yep yeah so um that's something that we really want to hone in tonight is like don't ever take somebody's story away from them always allow people to feel like they're in the driver's seat of their story um, and they can share what is what is appropriate to share when and when to share. Because we also see that this community experiences a lot of bullying, yep. um, a lot of homelessness, LGBTQ yep. individuals, ex, um, youth, LGBTQ youth. youth experience the highest rates of homelessness in this country. Um, non-supportive families. How do you think the youth become homeless? Non-supportive families is part of that for sure. Um, cycles of oppression. Um, which that is a very social worky term. So I won't make you, I won't make you sit through a lecture from me tonight. Um, but also religion has a big impact. I know we all are, I'm assuming everyone's from Chattanooga. You know, the environment that we live in. Don't and the make assumptions, that we live in. Harley. Don't make assumptions. You're right, you're right, you're right. Um, but we all know that people have very strong feelings about the LGBTQ community. Um, And so a lot of people, for a lot of people, religion is a safe harbor. And for some people, it's not a safe harbor. So we don't want to want to make assumptions about people's religious beliefs, either um, LGBTQ or not. And we kind of talked about the barriers to seeking help earlier, where the community might feel like they might not be able to rely on hospitals, law enforcement, the court system out of fear of being outed or not believed or disrespected. Um, Many different things that can happen there. Anything you want to share? 
Mm-mm. I think you're okay. good. I know we're getting close to our time too. Yeah, we don't want to keep you on that because we understand that time is a very valuable asset and it runs out very quickly. Um, but the last thing we kind of wanted to leave you all on is how to help um, or how to be supportive of the community. Um, what is to be supportive? Just allow people to share what they want to share and don't make assumptions about them. Um, respect everyone's lived name, uh, everyone's lived, everyone's name and pronouns because some people also change their name um, when they're coming out as trans. Um, so respect that. When somebody says that they, they go by a different name, just call them their name. Like same thing with a nickname. Like I used to, my name's Harley. People used to call me Harles. Also, I don't know where that came from, Harles. But people called me that. It was a nickname. But for some people, their name is very, very important to them. And a lot of people, their name is very important to them. So we want to respect people by calling them their name and the name that they prefer. Um, ask questions. So it's okay to be curious. It's okay to not know. Um, just don't ask super invasive questions. Like I would never ask somebody like, have you had any surgeries because you're transgender or anything like that? But asking questions like, okay, well, what pronouns would you like me to use? Those are totally appropriate questions. Well, and I think, I think for you guys kind of thinking about the questions, don't ask questions you wouldn't be okay with somebody asking mm -hmm. you, right? If, if it's a boundary for you or it's a, it's a, it's a question that you're like, that's no, that's none of this person's business, then, you know, try to think about that as you're, because I think this is the other thing, as you're learning, you do become naturally curious about things. And, and sometimes we do engage with people in a way that our intentions may not be bad, but there could be harm that's caused. And so I think, you know, really evaluating for yourself, you know, kind of those things as you're, as you're asking these questions, what, what is really necessary? What really makes the difference? Um, and kind of thinking through that. Um, yeah, because it is, it's personal. It's, it's, we don't want to make people in this community also feel like they're an anomaly. And, uh, uh, again, that they're not a normal human being like everybody else. Yep. And you just want to respect everyone's lived experience. Everyone goes through different things in their lives and all those experiences kind of and kind of culminate to be like who a person is. So just respect where they've been, who they are and what they use, what words they use for themselves, how they want to be treated and respected and all of that. And I know, and I'm going to stop the share in here so I can see everybody. Um, I know that we just shared a ton of information and it could seem like you don't want to do the wrong thing or say the wrong thing. And I know that feels like a lot of pressure because I've been there. I felt like there's so much to learn about this community. I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to be offensive. Um, I just want to share that people can tell your intentions. People know like when you're just trying to be a good friend, when you're just asking questions because you generally are curious and you want to be a better ally or a better friend to them versus maliciously, kind of like what we April was talking about earlier. Some people are just maliciously mean and hurtful to people. Asking a, a, a question, um, people can usually tell your intention behind that. Um, so don't feel super pressured after this talk tonight to get everything right and to have all the answers. This is kind of more of a, a starting point mm -hmm. um, for you to do some more education if you want to, or just you can leave it here and just respect the next person who comes by and um, whatever that looks like for you. Well, and like we always say in the South, guys, I think the, the golden rule treat others the way you want to be treated. So I have a, a remix to that. I want to say treat people how they want to be treated, not okay, how I want enough. to be treated. Fair enough. I can roll with that. Okay. So I did a, a remix, put it on a playlist or something. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So I think that's kind of um, yeah. a, a little bit about what we wanted to share tonight. We'll stay after. So if you have questions or comments or anything, we're here and available for you all. I understand that you might not have an opportunity to ask these questions in a non judgmental and open forum. Um, so that's what we want to be here for you tonight. So um, I'm going to hand it over to Sandy to see if she has anything else to share with you all tonight. And otherwise, thank you so much for listening to us tonight. This was a pleasure and it was really great to meet all these wonderful faces. Yeah, thanks guys. Thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. And my dog is barking in the background the moment I unmuted myself, but um, sorry for that. But thank you so much. Um, I wanted to share with you kids too, just a little bit. I and they mentioned a few of the many reasons why I invited um, both April and Harley on tonight to share with us on this topic. But I, I really feel strongly about knowing 
like Harley mentioned, even if you just stop here with this knowledge and you don't dive in further, just knowing something about the different people, different communities, the different lifestyles within your community, because you might have a family member, you might end up meeting someone that becomes your friend, you might end up with, uh, or end up, you might have a coworker that you work with within this community that they discussed tonight. And if you don't know anything about it, you won't know how to interact with them. You won't know how to not offend them. You won't know how to, you know, relate to them. So my background is in social services too. So I totally understand where they're both coming from. So I just wanted to share a little bit too about why, um, another reason why I wanted to have them share with you guys tonight. Um, did you, any of you guys have any questions? Don't be scared, guys. Come on. <laughs> I did um, message on the chat to all of them. I was like, is this making sense? Do you have any questions? Um, are you understanding uh, while you guys were presenting? And pretty much all of them said it makes sense. Um, it's a lot of information. Um, or one of them said, it doesn't make sense, but I'm listening. I think they were trying to figure out, you know, follow you. So hopefully if you do have questions, maybe you're not thinking of one now, but later you realize, oh, wait, I should have asked this. Feel free to reach out to me, contact me any way you can. And if I don't know the answer, I will get that question to Harley in April and we can get you the answer to that for sure. And Sandy, if there's any point that you feel like there's a part two or another another aspect of this, you know, specifically maybe bullying um, and what that looks like for youth. Then um, I think we we also would be we would welcome that opportunity if the if the group felt like it was helpful. Awesome, yeah, I'll definitely be in touch on on that topic for sure. I think that's important. Awesome. All right, well, if there are no questions right now, again, feel free to reach out to me if you think of any. And thank you so much for being on here tonight, everyone, and for April and Harley for taking time to share with us. I greatly appreciate everyone's time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. guys. Blake, did you have a question? You're muted. I don't know if you're trying to talk or not. No, sorry, my thing won't work. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. Did you have a question? Uh, no. All right, well, have a good night. Thank you. You too. Thank you, Harley. All right, Sandy, thank you so much for having us again. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye.